My name is Dale Rollins. I'm the director of the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, which is located in western Fisher County, heart of the quail country in West Texas. And this is a research and demonstration facility that will help us sustain the heritage of quail hunting into the 21st century. It's a 4,700 acre ranch. It's beautiful quail habitat. It's in the heart of quail country and it's very representative of a lot of the country. So it has a lot of attributes that make it very desirable from a research standpoint. And then also it functions as an education or demonstration situation. So we have field days, various other activities for other landowners to come out and learn that are interested in growing more quail. They can see what we're doing here and try to apply it to their situation. And if we don't actively and proactively manage our quail habitat and our quail populations, even out here in the great quail populations of West Texas, we're going to be the we're going to watch those blink out like we have further towards Dallas and points further east. So we got to learn what we can do to stop the bleeding out here, and then try to manage our quail populations progressively further eastward. One of the things that we've noticed in quail populations over the last 40 years is that quail populations are going like this. They're they're declining at the rate of about 5% per year, even faster once you get east of Interstate 35. And most of the quail hunters say amen to that, we've seen it. So we're wanting to try to define and, and apply practices out here that will slow that decline or even reverse it over the next 15 years. We've got to stop the bleeding here first with some of the research that we're doing and then hopefully move that, that progression back towards Dallas as we increase bird populations in that part of the world. What we hope to accomplish out here is to find out how to optimize the quail equation to produce more quail. And one of the things that we're looking at is the percentage of hens that are nesting. That's one of the factors that may be a weak link. So we're addressing some of our management, which will be supplemental feeding this coming spring to see if we can get more of the hens to nest. One of the biggest tools or technologies that we use in our research here is radio telemetry. Putting these radio collars on quail so we can learn more about them, learn their secrets. Quail are, are very cryptic animals. Uh, we don't often find their nests, but if you put those radio collars on, we can. So we, uh, we do a lot of work based upon where are those hens nesting, is it in prickly pear, is it in grass. If we do a prescribed burn or brush control, are we helping or hurting that situation? We're also using that telemetry to estimate the survival of the quail. So we monitor them, we can see who's killing them. We call it quail CSI. We can look at a, at a, a specimen and, and try to determine who killed it. A quail has many enemies. Uh, they have enemies at all stages of their life cycle. Critters that get into the nest, wild hogs. We have wild hogs out here. We have skunks, we have coyotes. We have a lot of those mammalian predators. A quail's worst natural enemy is a hawk, and specifically one called a cooper's hawk. So we're monitoring how many hawks we see in different times of year, be able to relate that back to the kind of mortalities we're seeing. So again, trying to understand this quail equation, habitat plus quail plus weather plus predators, and, and what, which of those variables can be manipulated and which cannot. In my opinion, coyotes are not the worst enemy that a quail has. In fact, sometimes I think they're overly maligned relative to quail management. But we'll be studying the diets of coyotes by collecting the scats, the droppings, on a monthly basis. And over a three year period, we'll analyze those and what percentage of the diet is made up of quail. So again, trying to find scientific information that either supports or refutes some of these old wives statements about quail management. One of the things that we have to be able to develop is a way to measure population responses in quail. In other words, we've got to know if the quail population is at this level or this level. So we evaluate several different techniques. One are whistle counts. There are 25 different locations on the ranch, and all during the summer, the interns are out there listening for how many different Bob White whistles they hear. How many different roosters do they hear calling? In the, in the fall, we monitor at those same locations what we call cubby calls. We're again trying to estimate how many quail are out there in this situation. And then one of the neatest studies that we've got going is with the Cedric Clayberg Wildlife Research Institute. We're counting quail from a helicopter. 
it's a high-tech situation. It's a four-seater helicopter. We've got laser range finders that estimate how far the quail are when they flush, that are Bluetooth wireless communicated to a tablet PC that we have on our leg. It's neat technology, and it's something that I think uh, as we develop that type of technology, other landowners will be able to use it to monitor their quail populations. It takes a number of partners to make a successful venture. We've got the raw ingredients out here, but you got to have money to, to do it too. And the Quail Unlimited, especially the Park City's Quail Unlimited chapter there in Dallas, has been a tremendous friend of the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch up to this point. They're basically funding our operating expenses at this point, so join Quail Unlimited and especially Park City's.